My name is Vanessa Rosa. I'm a Brazilian visual artist, and I'm the creator of the Little Martian sci-fi universe. When the pandemic hit, I was already on Mars. Not so far as a planet Mars, but a little piece of uh, the Californian Sonoran Desert that we call Mars. It's an exercise in resilience and also creative madness. Uh, it's like we are living in a sci-fi world. It's also, I think, an important exercise. Like if our technology could one day take us to Mars, how could we live better in nowadays Earth? Especially the places that are harsh, like a desert. We are dealing with living out of solar energy, being off grid, but also using as much technology as possible, like high tech, low cost, to try to make living such a harsh environment easier. It's very funny because nowadays we have this idea like, oh, these billionaires are trying to go to Mars to escape Earth. But the thing is, with the worst possible scenarios of uh, climate change, it, it's still way easier to live on Earth than it is to live on Mars. Thinking of ways that life could ever thrive in a place like Mars is actually fascinating to make us understand better how we could nurture life on Earth better. Just being in this environment was extremely inspiring for me. And at first I was thinking like, what can you do with local materials? So I started collecting local clay on Mars and making these characters that I now call little Martians. And this one is the first of them. At first I didn't really know what it meant to make these humans out of play like us. I was in this environment where everybody's talking about AI in the future, and a part of me was kind of nostalgic for our past. So after making my first Martian with local clay, I decided to try high-end clays and glazes, and I made one with a shape that I liked better, and then I made a silicone mold out of it, and I started reproducing it. And that's how this series of uh, the <laughs> hundreds of uh, Martian heads started. It's a really high-end chemical process. It needs extremely high temperatures. It's extremely endurable. Like this can last for thousands and thousands of years. And that's also something that intrigues me of how like so much of what we do nowadays is transitory. So much of our digital media is not gonna last. The story really started to emerge slowly, like from the artwork. It was already a little bit of a play with the stereotypes we have about life on Mars or future humans. AI is what inspired me to create the stories about how the data we produce eventually can be used to feed a simulation that just makes human tales accessible for future generations that might not, not be recognizable to us had is like it's a way of preserving it's a way of loving everything we have i make all these heads and then i 3d scan them and i been playing with ai models for creating part of the text but i also like to do a lot of it myself so it's this interplay and then i use these ai voices to animate the 3D scans of the ceramics with another AI model that um, is made by NVIDIA, it's doing beta, it's called Audio to Face, that has this feature called Audio to Emotion that does like automatic like expressions of sadness and joy, etc. in that 3D match. So it's like really as recreating an actor. And I feel like more than competing with real actors, what this technique really means is that you can have like now these generative characters that you interact with and they have a life of their own. They can just keep telling their story every time a little bit different. And that's kind of the beauty. Like when we talk about uploading a mind, that's what it means. It's like you have this model of uh, the tales, the specific tales that someone would tell. And this character can now be talking to anyone and always have a new conversation. Like, that's something that you miss in books. You can 
if you love a book, you want to, you know, keep existing in that world. But a book has only a, some hundreds of pages. And then maybe you can reread it because you can like notice things that you miss. But it's still the same book. So often we just read more books from the same author so we can go back to that world again. But with these techniques, it's like the role of the art artist, of the creator, becomes like creating these worlds. What if I could just create these worlds in which people can spend their time as much time as they want? And I'm fascinated with like how that changes the way we are capable of telling stories.